Well, 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 good morning, everyone. You can all hear me? Oh, hi, Jennifer. I haven't seen you in a, in a long time. How are you doing? You okay? Fantastic. Daniel, nice to see you. Mark Jones, nice to see you, sir. James Papel, yeah. Bill, what a simple name, but that's awesome. Stuart Gray, oh no, Stuart Gray is here. I'm very intimidated by Stuart because he's very smart and very British, so, hmm. Kinsella, I think I said your name right. Did I pronounce it okay? <sighs> so much stress. Linnea, nice to see you. Becky, you look like you're just frozen with excitement. Oh, that's your, that's your screenshot. Okay, perfect. Robert Lowe is here. Uh, Yoko Takano, konnichiwa. Reese Randall is here and Don Lukovich. Okay, fantastic. From, from Yoko, Japan, or from Yoko in Japan? Hi, okay. Nice to see you. Okay, a good little group. I like this. 14 of us. Okay. So this is Pecha Kucha. Do you, do you all know what Pecha Kucha is? Have you ever seen a Pecha Kucha? Well, of course, Yoko is nodding her head. You made one, Yoko. So yeah, we know you know. Jennifer, you all, you all know what you all know what one is. Hmm. Okay. Because I'm thinking we have we have a couple of Pecha Kuchas that are asynchronous. So the people have recorded them already and they're on YouTube. So do you want to start by watching those and we can ease into it? Or do you want to hear them live? Do you want to get Mark Jones to be the first one to go? Oh, pressure. Don't, don't care. Uh, Yoko seems excited to hear you, Mark. So let's let's hear it. All right. Mark, are you um, ready? Yeah, I just got to share my screen. Da, 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 da. Um, right. So it's this Why can one. I not hear you? Oh, you can't hear me. Interesting. Okay, can you everybody can else hear me? Him. Oh. And I cannot. That's weird. Hmm. Don't worry. Just give me one second. Okay. Oh, wow. Sounds like I'm in a dub reggae kind of record. Is that better? I can hear myself, but not too much now. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay. Oh. All right, so I guess I'll get started. So, all right, my name is Mark Jones. I'm at Tokyo Kasei University. I'm a full-time teacher on the intensive course there, and I also teach at another university in Japan. And today I'm gonna to talk about making your classes ADHD aware, some simple tips for including everybody in your class. Most of the tips I'll give are about ADHD, but they apply to everyone. So I am a teacher researcher. I mainly research listening and task-based language teaching. And I was diagnosed with ADHD in 2017 when I was 38 years old. Um, and I've worked with young learners from kindergarten up, junior high, high school, university and businesses. So one of the things that um, is a big deal about ADHD is our attention to detail. OK, we get caught up uh, on things that really interest us or things that happen in the moment and then uh, other things can uh, go to one side. And it's not that we don't care about them. It's just they're not as salient. And this is because we have a problem with attention regulation. Um, so even if something isn't one of our special interests, we can get really caught up on it and find it difficult to shift tasks. But also if something is one of our special interests and we get really hooked into it, we can sit there for hours, be this Minecraft creating PowerPoint slides and stuff. Now we're also non-linear thinkers. So 
we have tangents coming off all over the place. Okay, so you probably see on these slides all spells out nonlinear thinking. So you'll have some great ideas from some of your uh, ADHD students as well, and they might come from nowhere, and you might just not understand the logic of where it does come from. Now, because of all this, we have a really big problem with time. We're essentially time blind. Okay, four hours is the same as four minutes. Okay, so uh, don't, we don't perceive it the same. So reminders are absolutely essential, be they visual or audio. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, aren't we all a little bit ADHD? Well, actually, no. Um, unless it's constant, unless it's uh, causing you problems in both your personal and private life, and as well as like your uh, work or study life, it's not ADHD. That's one of the diagnostic criteria, okay? Um, some of the other things that come up are emotional dysregulation. This can come up as like being really wired and happy about stuff, but it can also be loss of a temper like this, okay? Um, we're also very impulsive. Um, so we'll do things in the moment as they seem like a good idea. So like, oh, let's go to a rock festival the night before an exam, yeah? so things like this. Um, a lot of inattention there. This is especially seen in uh, women. And it's one of the reasons that women get a late diagnosis. They can seem dreaming and distracted. But, you know, this is one of the things that often manifests instead of the typical hyperactivity as well. Um, also fidgeting, it's a big one for kids. Um, but it's also can be a restless kind of mind. You can have a very fidgeting mind and feel completely restless all the time. One of the ways to combat this is just like kind of give a little break, time for stretching and things like that, especially in Zoom and stuff. But, you know, there's no problem with the classroom too. Also, interests. I've already mentioned we have special interests and things. Remember, it's not teaching communicatively if you're not teaching to your students' interests. It's true of all students, not just your ADHD students. Okay, so take those interests on board. We can latch things onto this and help make a second language acquisition a bit more effective and you know you can do with uh, changes as well to capture that like you know attention uh, management problem so audio visual as well as text uh, digital in real life mixed together okay so time limited activities are great for this too um, okay so you have five minutes to do this and that and the other okay personalizing things we want to feel good because we've got a dopamine uh, problem. We don't get enough of it, okay? So use their intrinsic motivations as carriers for language acquisition, but give limited choices. It's not, what do you want to do? I don't know, but limit it, okay? Give a menu of like three or four things, okay? Is it unworkable for just one or two people? Well, you know it's just one or two people. We're estimated to be 7.5% of the population possibly more. And of course, every class is different. Okay. And you've got people wanting to study languages because we seek the novel thing. There could be many more in there. Okay. And it isn't just one or two. And also those changes you make are going to make more accessible for your neurotypical students as well. Okay. Now, uh, one of the biggest uh, things that I've found that has really helped me is notes. Okay. Keeping a notebook on you at all times, okay? Um, it's a hard drive for your brain, okay? Put it down, consult it frequently, okay? Um, if you can get your ADHD students to do that, they'll be more organized. They'll know what they're doing if they put in action points. The bullet journal method has been a lifesaver for me. I don't say that lightly. It's probably actually saved my life, okay? It's being organized is not just pens and paper, it's getting rid of digital clutter as well. If you are asking your learners to use three, four, five different websites, ah, uh, okay, it's gonna be painful for yourself as well. Remember visual and auditory aids are gonna help as well. Now, it does take more time to get your ADHD students to do this because starting new habits is really difficult and getting them to really carry and use notebooks all the time is good. If it happens for three days and it's really good, that's not enough. Okay, keep coaching and uh, checking and things, okay? Now, also, if all else fails, stop and try again. Not everything works for everybody. You meet one person with ADHD, you've met one person with ADHD. Okay, we're all different. We all have different things that stop us working as well as we could do, okay? So, 
<laughs> Sorry, really short. So um, if you do have any questions about this, I am happy to evangelize about ADHD at any time. I'm totally out about this. Okay, so, you know, on social media, uh, you know, ask me if I'd like to overshare and I would love to do that. Okay, and yeah, so any more questions, Discord awaits and I'll be lurking on there frequently, uh, not just today, but like, you know, over the course of the conference. So cheers, everybody. Thanks so much. That was a bad but it just looked really weird on my webcam, sorry. <laughs> I thought that was great. Does anybody have any burning questions for Mark? If you do, you can just unmute yourself and ask away. If not, you're free to wait and join us on Discord later and uh, visit Mark the Lurker Jones. <laughs> uh, Mark, if you don't mind, I had a question. You, you mentioned the you were time blind. Yes. How does how does creating a Pecha Kucha, does it help you in that organize your time or is it is it just the same or is there anything, it, it seems to me it would be maybe interesting. Um, to be honest, I am so used to delivering presentations and like teaching sessions that it doesn't really affect me that way, but it can affect students and stuff. Um, especially, you know, if you're setting things like uh, five minute presentations, five minute discussions, it's really difficult to understand what, how five minutes feels in that kind of, you know, discussion time. Um, but for me and, you know, members of my family, um, I'm sure my parents are undiagnosed ADHD. Uh, it's just like, oh, yeah, you know, we got uh, half an hour. So, you know that's uh, enough time to have another quick shower or something like that. And it's like my mom's screeching at my dad and stuff like that. Or, um, you know, oh, well, um, I've got, you know, uh, another uh, 30 minutes before I'm due to get the train to work. So I'll just finish reading this chat. Oh my God. Yeah, so it's that kind of thing. And I'm sure this is happening for a lot of your learners. If you've got people who are frequently late uh, or suddenly rushing into class, and things like that you know if if you find that they have got ADHD don't be surprised that they're going to be frequently frequently late it can also be hideously early students as well because they're overcompensating okay so I am either five hours early or five minutes late okay so you know so wow. yeah I've been lurking on the website earlier waiting for the zoom to come online because they're like I can't be late I can't be late I can't be late okay all right. Thanks, Mark. Very, very interesting stuff. What a good start we're off to. All right. Our next person is going to be James Papel. Uh, he tells me his computer is a little bit slow, which is kind of means it's like my brain in the morning at nine, even at 930. So just take a moment, James, get set up. Make sure you've got your, your screen share on and your voice is, is working and we can hear you. And then get started whenever you're, whenever you're ready. Okay, thank you. Um, it might just be a minute or two while we wait. Shall I sing to you all? <laughs> no. Can I ask a question for Mark? Sure. Go ahead, Daniel. Um, so in Japan, have you found ADHD to be stigmatized? Do, have you had conversations with students about ADHD or other teachers, other professors? Um, yeah, actually, there's quite a few uh, teachers at one of the places where I work who, where there are a few teachers who are ADHD. And a, a project I have ongoing is that um, I think a lot of uh, foreign teachers uh, are ADHD because we do tend to seek out novel experiences. And what's more novel than just moving to a country at the spur of a moment decision? Yeah. Um, it is stigmatized, but I, less than I expected, to be honest. But I had like one student who is ADHD and her parents were not supporting her getting a diagnosis. It was really sad, but uh, she said um, support from me and some advice and just, you know, being having somebody who knows and uh, can listen uh, really helped her out. So and then I didn't see her again because she'd moved campuses because she changed to the second year. So yeah, um, it, it can be tough. Thank you. It's a really nice question, Daniel. Okay, 
So I, I hope to share my screen with you now. <laughs> Sorry for the uh, the long pause there, but um, it, it should be coming up in just a second. Can everyone see my screen? Oh yeah. Oh yes. Okay. Whew. Um, so, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm very grateful uh, for the opportunity to tell you a little bit about uh, the TESOL Affiliate Network and Professional Council, or as we like to refer it, the AMPC. My name is Jim Papel, and I'm the current chair. Uh, so, let me start by telling you what the AMPC is. Um, here's a banner photo that we were uh, taking in our last uh, convention when we were all face to face and all smiles, as you can see. And what we are is a council of past chairs or presidents of affiliate organizations, just like Cotiso, uh, and we try to strengthen and support those collaborations. So who do we serve uh, beside Cotiso? Well, just about everyone uh, in every corner of the globe, except for maybe Antarctica. Uh, we have 72 global affiliates and 42 uh, additional affiliates based in the US. And uh, it's the job of our tiny little band of nine AMPC members to, uh, to bring that together. So as you can tell, one of our primary goals is to generate interest and engagement between the board members of an affiliate and its members of TESOL. And we like to shout from the highest rooftop uh, about all of our successes. So last year we promoted TESOL's first ever online conference uh, and also some of the webinars and, uh, and things as well. So, if you'll bear with me for just a second, I'd like to uh, briefly highlight a few events that are coming. Um, we have the Cotisol on April 10th and BC Teal on April the 16th, Tesla Atlantic on April the 30th, and TESOL Columbia on May the 27th. And you can check those out on the worldwide calendar on the TESOL page. So here's a picture of me looking a bit goofy outside of our last TESOL convention. Uh, the AMPC is part of the leadership forum of TESOL. And it's our job to bring concerns and feedback from affiliates to TESOL uh, to help form their strategic plans. So let me introduce um, our other members in our team. Uh, first, our incoming chair is Bessie, who was a member of uh, the California TESOL and is past chair and supporter of TESOL Greece. Uh, she will be taking over next November and it helps, uh, you know, she helps to organize the affiliate events at the conference. And uh, so you'll be seeing her face when we all are back face to face. Next, um, we have uh, our current ESOL president, uh, Gabriella Kova. She's from the Czech Republic. Gabby is our board liaison who provides us uh, and helps us with our vision and identifying our and implementing our strategic goals. Next, um, we have Valerie Novik, uh, who is the ESOL staff member who communicates with all of the 120 or so affiliates about submitting reports and updates. Uh, questions about ESOL related matters or the AMPC to go to her as she is the constant on our team. And then uh, we, I would also like to introduce you to our events chair, uh, Lynn Fung, who represents Three Rivers TESOL. She helps the AMPC to put on events designed to support current, past or future affiliate leaders. Um, by offering our monthly webinar series. Uh, they're all free and they're open to any members, uh, whether you're an affiliate or uh, just a member uh, of, your, of your local affiliate. But here's a collage of some of our most recent webinars. And I would like to invite you all to attend. Um, we offer them at different times uh, of the day so um, everyone can participate. If you've missed one of our webinars, don't worry about it. They're all on our YouTube channel. And uh, you'll see the uh, link at the top of this page. Um, this is a, a screenshot of our mini conference from last uh, spring. And uh, I'd like to cordially invite all of you to attend our upcoming event on April the 9th, 10th, and the 11th. There will be uh, several uh, interesting uh, presentations, including uh, Cotisol's very own Wayne Finley. All right, next is our uh, newsletter chair, Jermaine uh, McDougall. And he hails from Columbia, is a past chair of there. And you can see from his smile that he loves to laugh. Uh, Jermaine supports our first time writers with help and helps people walk through uh, the writing process. And here's a screenshot of the affiliate news that Jermaine works on, where you can read about all the wonderful things happening in the organizations all over the world. If you have a conference you want to promote, let us know. If you have an anniversary you want to celebrate, we'll celebrate it with you. We are always looking for new content. 
And here are the rest of our gang who worked tirelessly on our committees. So there's Karen from Indianapolis, Petro from Tanzania, ESJ from Israel, uh, Cheryl Lynn from Georgia, and Stephanie from Massachusetts. This brings our number up to nine, although we have 10 potential members on the committee. So if you are a TESOL member, you can also access uh, us through the My TESOL forum. We have a forum for current leaders and also in a, for a forum for members of an affiliate. So um, it's a great way to share updates and support and to connect with others. And also we have a library, not as nice as the one in this picture, um, for affiliate leaders who are looking for support one of the things that we do is we collect and archive affiliate board materials like governance documents, handbooks, uh, all of those sorts of things. We are happy to loan them to anyone and we don't have library fines. So if you are interested in joining the ANPC, we have 10 spots on the council and our call will go up on the website uh, this summer. If you are a past chair, please consider joining our small group. The deadline to apply is September the 1st. And I'd like to say that um, I think the work that we do is very important. We meet monthly to work on our committees, but also to socialize. So as you can see here, we have regular coffee chats and we engage in games like charades. Um, we, we love to have fun while we're volunteering. It's not easy work, but um, it's there. So I really appreciate you giving me the time today to, uh, to listen to my presentation. And I, I hope I was able to fill in some blanks on work of the ANPC. Um, please feel free to reach out to either Valerie or myself if you have any questions, and we'd love to see you uh, uh, possibly as a volunteer sometime in the future. So, thank you. Well, thank you, James or Jim. Which do you prefer, James or Jim? Oh, either one is fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Jim, I noticed your desktop looks a lot like my desktop. <laughs> it's only a... a it's only one third of it. <laughs> you, well, yeah, I wasn't going to brag about the size of my desktop, <laughs> but yeah, I, I completely understand. Jim, I'm just going to ask you a question that I, I've gotten thrown at me over the last little while, which is, you know, when people at Cotessel, when we organize things like this, we, we don't get any money for this. We don't get paid for it. Um, feel free to contribute if you like, everyone. So why why do you do it? Just Quick, 20 seconds, why do, you, why do you volunteer and and perform these leadership roles? Well, that's a good question. I've, I've been doing it for quite some time. Um, you know, I, I originally, uh, I, I sought out uh, my local affiliate because uh, I thought it was a, an opportunity to expand my horizons and, and I did. And once uh, we started creating communities of practice uh, in my area, which is Tessel, Ontario, um, with other provinces in Canada, I saw the power that could be had from collaboration. And I wanted to continue that. And I think that's one thing that these type of organizations do. It becomes a, a bit of a social club and a bit of an opportunity to, um, you know, to meet with people um, in ways that are, are unique. But also when you're building something, benefits lots of other people. I think that's a great takeaway as well. Well said, sir. Well said. Yeah, I just typed in the in the group chat there, communities of practice, they're, they're so important. Um, for me, I, I live in rather rural Korea. So having a, a network that I can reach out to is, uh, is super important. Super important. And I'm glad you're all here. And a special hello to Bill Littlewood. I think that's you, Bill, sitting there. Excellent. All right. Who is next? Let's let's just take a breath for a minute. Pecha Kuchas, are they fun to create or are they horribly brain twisting to create? I haven't made one in a few years, but I remember when I did, I thought, wow, this is a really amazing idea. And doing it was just such a pain in the. <clears throat> I can't hear you now, Michael. That's because I, I hit my Zoom, my external, beautiful. 
semi-invisible microphone, I hit the mute button precisely where I should, just not hard enough. Never mind. It was something really, really important about Pecha Kuchas being fun to do. They are, so keep doing them. Okie dokie. Who is next? Who is next? I think it's Kinsella. You're going to go next. You too are muted, but it's all okay. Just relax. Okay, thank you very much. I didn't expect to be next. Um, so uh, just give me one second to set up. Yep, take your time. And, um, There's no hurry. This is the joy of being online in such a spacious conference. We can just go slow. Okay, very, very good. Uh, let's see if I can get you to see my screen. Um, here we go. Okay, let's try that first. Can everybody see my screen? I can. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it's not quite in slide mode yet because then it will take off like a rocket and just uh, take us through 20 seconds a slide. So, um, <laughs> but um, thank you for coming, everyone. Um, I'm uh, about ready to start. I'll just uh, introduce myself shortly, starting with the first slide. So, okay. see if it wants to go. Okay, so again, good morning. Uh, my name is Kinsella Valis. I'm from the University of Shizuoka in Japan, um, where I work at the Language and uh, Communication Research Center. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, English speaking practice through movies project. Um, and I'm very excited to share this with you. And I look forward to your questions. So a little bit on the background of this project, uh, a methodology, the implementation, which means what we did in class and also the results of the project. I'll try to do a short discussion about what I learned and what I think to apply in the future. Okay, so um, this was a two day short uh, summer English speaking course for adults in which I used four movies from the 2000s and selected colloquial phrases. The purpose of the course was to improve learner understanding, response and response to these phrases. So, and hopefully they obtained lifelong learning study skills as well while doing so. So as you can see, we use scenes from four different movies, but only two themes, conversation starters and English at work. Now these two themes match the learning goals that the students set for themselves uh, in the pre-course surveys that they filled out at the beginning of this course. Um, so um, I love movies in case you, you hadn't noticed. Um, so uh, this is what a class would look like 90 minutes. Um, and um, right, we, we started with an overview of previously started, uh, studied phrases. And then we talk a bit about the content of the movies without spoilers. And we talk about, uh, discuss three or four scenes, practice and introduce phrases. Um, so research questions. The aim of the study was to gain insight into um, intentional vocabulary learning activities, modeling and production in film based in the film based conversation course. The main focus was converting passive vocabulary into active vocabulary. So for the methodology, um, qualitative, we used um, I used uh, recorded conversation uh, instructor observations in class pre and post course uh, surveys. Um, my participants were about 11 Japanese business people and public servants who used English at work. The age group was between 30 and 78. Um, what we did in class was uh, included input and output activities. Uh, input activities would be, for example, warm ups, uh, guessing famous lines. Um, we also practiced read along uh, with English subtitles, then focused on target phrases and repeated those in pairs of groups. And we ended with a mini lecture on dialogue cues. Now, this is an example of a warm up activity in which people had to guess which movie this was. Perhaps you can already uh, tell me what you think this movie is. And it's not The Lord of the Rings, it's The Fellowship of the Ring, the first movie. Right. Um, so, next uh, is a screen capture of one scene. Oops, we're moving along a little bit. Uh, screen capture of one scene from the movie Pitch Perfect. You can see the subtitles are in English and some of the target language is already included on the screen. So we would start reading silently, but we would also read aloud playing the scene again and practice afterwards with text on paper. 
so uh, this is an example of a slide that would take the students from the entire scene to focus target language, such as have I made myself clear and its answer crystal. Uh, we would then learn the meaning of this sentence, how to use it and in which tone to pronounce it and uh, which tone to say it. Okay. So um, at the end of this, we would have a little lecture uh, on dialogue cues. Um, for example, we talk about if you're given a compliment, you should always say thank you. And sometimes if possible, return the compliment. Um, we also discussed how tone changes everything and looked at several examples from the movies. Um, for example, at the bottom here, you can say hard pass. <laughs> um, so output activities consisted of repeating target phrases. Uh, sometimes students would ask for other phrases they found interesting as well in, in a scene. Um, we had pair and group practice conversations, review activities such as gap text, situational cues, and a final video project as well. So this is an example of one of the gap review activities in which students would look at gap sentences that were similar to the situation in the movie, um, but they would have to pick the correct phrase from all the target phrases that they had learned so far. Um, singer uh, here was actually composer in the film. Right. Another example, um, pair work in which a situation is offered and the students would have to target, uh, apply the target phrase. Of course, um, they had um, all of the scenes written down on a handout, so they could refer back to that. Um, one of the surprising things was, um, are you on Facebook in English versus do you use Facebook in Japanese? Okay, so the final project was a Padlet project. Students had to choose a scene, practice it, record it, upload it. Um, then their next task would be to rate other students' work by giving stars and short comments about what they thought was best about their performances. Um, so the results of my observations and recordings were that students seem to have a greater understanding and an active application of the vocabulary introduced in this course, um, but members retained the surprising phrases the best, and they showed improvement, uh, of course, a little bit in pronunciation, but transfer vocabulary was rudimentary but present. So at the beginning of the course, students started with, I can do it easily, and they ended up saying, I need more practice. So these pie charts show that in general conversation, there's a difference of 16.4% in the I need more uh, practice section. And the same was true for English at work, where um, I can do it decreased by 17.3%. Okay. So um, what I think to improve um, active use of language acquired through film, um, we would need a pre-course level assessment, which I didn't do this time. I want students to be aware of their starting points. Confidence building activities are a must. Maximizing output time should be a priority and my input time should be shortened. So that's all I, I wanted to talk to you about today. Thank you very much for your attention. If you should have any further questions, please feel free to contact me at the uh, email address in blue. Again, my name is Kinsella Valiz. Enjoy the rest of the conference and um, may the force be with you. <laughs> I got it this time. Oh. <laughs> All right, then, thank you, Kinsella Valise. That's fantastic. I have a question that is completely unrelated. Uh, I'm looking at your bio here, and it says you taught in your home countries, plural. Uh, what, are, yes. what are your home countries? I'm curious. Uh, it's always a long story, but I'll keep it short since this is the Picha Kucha presentation. Um, so uh, I was born in the Caribbean uh, on an island called Curacao. And this uh, used to be a Dutch colony. Uh, so the Netherlands used to, to own the islands. And um, so I am actually, uh, nationality wise, I'm Dutch. So that's why I have two home countries. Okay, fantastic. Um, can I ask about, um, like, did you have any kind of special criteria for choosing those movies or did you just kind of pick things that you thought that your students would be interested in? Um, yes. So I tried to kind of go across genres. Um, I could only pick four movies. Uh, as, it, um, as it turned out, four movies was actually a little bit too much of a good thing. But I decided four genres um, to maybe get everybody interested. 
um, as well as, um, of course, what I like to watch because that I had to watch the movie several times to select <laughs> phrases. So, um, you know, um, both both of those. So just to get a, a good spread of movies, uh, good topics that students might be interested in and um, something recent um, that they might have seen as well. Sure. Yeah, it's nice. I really liked the, the student reflection at the end. I think it's really important, especially in such a short course. So, yeah, yes. great stuff. Thank you. I'd just like to echo uh, movies are awesome. Uh, short videos are awesome. YouTube, uh, YouTube is hit and miss, but if you find the right type of thing, awesome. Uh, I did an entire course, self plug with zombie movies. It was all zombie movies for a whole semester. And people at first, they were like, what, zombie movies? Like that's gonna, for the whole semester? That's like one class. No way, baby. It's the whole class. We went through the whole, we went through the history of zombie movies. And because zombie movies, they come in different shapes and sizes. They're not all like rage, super fast zombies. We, we really got to talk about stuff. And then there's also a book called, um, for, it's made for English language learners called Surviving the Zombie Apocalypse, I think that's it, or in, English for the Zombie Apocalypse. It's, it's fantastic. I'm going to stop talking about it, but it's, it's really good. And if you want to talk about movies and films and you can't get in touch with Kinsella, you can always, you can always talk to me about it. Uh, I didn't show Busan Heng, Train to Busan Jim, because it, it wasn't out yet, but that's a super duper zombie movie because <laughs> there's so, so many sad. Koreanisms in it that it, it really, you know, you go, oh, why are there so many, why are there so many really young soldiers that are zombies? That's just weird. That's just lazy. No, no, not lazy at all. Very, very, very smart. I'm going to stop talking so that we can, so that we can move on. No, I'm not. I'm going to mention one more thing. Kinsella, you use Padlet, don't you? Yes, I do. I saw a Padlet. Uh, may I ask question. one question? Of Michael? course, Loco. Uh, hi, Kinsella. Hello. Thank you for a great presentation. I'm curious about the, you know, the platform for a student uh, reflection. Why you chose Padlet? So there are a lot of platform, but why Padlet? Um, because we only had one class to do the project, I wanted something in which students could easily upload and just basically scan the QR code and upload uh, their video. Um, I could have used Flipgrid, I could have asked them to make a video on that, but then they to access that, then I think it would be a little bit less quick. So that's I why see. I chose Padlet instead, yes. Mm -hmm. I see, thank you. No, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. um, you, Can I answer a question in the in the chat box in the chat boxes? Of course, okay. as you like. Okay. Um, so, um, am I a vocab sick person? Not yet, <laughs> but I, I am interested um, recently in um, vocabulary acquisition as well. So. Fantastic! Mm -hmm. I love Padlet. Padlet is awesome. And in a shameless plug for the rest of the conference, you can go look at stuff on Padlet. Uh, the poster presentations. Um, in the when you think about Padlet, if you've never seen it, it's just like a giant virtual cork board, which doesn't really tell you much of anything. But if you go and you look at, uh, for example, uh, Pinar, our, our presenter from Turkey, I believe, her or his Padlet is absolutely amazing. If you go and look at it, you can just see what the possibilities are because you can move stuff around. It's, uh, it's very, very interesting. And it's so easy to use that the students who always start, at least mine, with, oh, God, we've got to sign up for something else. Oh, man. The, in about two minutes, they're, they're like, oh, OK. Yeah, easy. Love it. It's, it's super good. Michael, stop talking. <laughs> who, is, who is next? I'm not exactly sure if uh, Jason Wolf and Jonathan Adriano are here. Are they here? I don't see them. Dun, 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 dun. So Michael, could you play my upload video? No. No, of course, <laughs> why not? Of course. Of course. I, 
I have the <laughs> tons of times to be the recording, so I lost my voice. So I can do the synchronous. Sorry. That's Use my video, please. No, no, that's perfectly okay. I will I will <laughs> find it. I will find it and share it for you now. This might just take me a second, but this is all part of the new normal, right? Hurry up and, and wait for the host to try to find what he's looking for. One second, because oh my goodness, it's right there. Michael, you are very, very good. Dun, dun, dun. Maybe you're not so good. Oh, I jinxed it by saying how good I was. Oh, now I'm not muted, so I can't talk to myself either. Oh, no. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. And if you're all ready, off we go. Hello, I'm Yoko Takano. I will talk about online project-based teaching beneficial to young learners and their family. I had to done the uh, online-based teaching since April to December last year. So I noticed about some beneficial point from student and parent survey. Okidoki Ego School is very small school in Nagoya local area. Since 1997, I have taught different level of student for 24 years. As of this year, I'm teaching elementary, junior high, and senior high level. Student number is 24. I believe Sabinion theory. She mentioned that the communicative competency is consists of four, and then if one competence improved, other competence gradually improved simultaneously. Therefore, I try to use the theory to make my student improve communicative competencies. I use her theory to do action research to help my students. As a result, all students improve their competence. This is a research paper, 2018. And also, I believe Ellis and Shintani theory and practice to set up the student center goal. So due to lockdown in April and May last year, I switched face-to-face -face session to online basis. So I have taught how to use Zoom to students' parents because target students are eight years to 12 years old. They need the parent support during the online session. I chose project-based learning to help students because it is a dynamic approach to teaching in which students explore real world problems and challenges simultaneously developing cross-curricular skill while working. So April, I set up an Asian ambassador project. Question was, how many countries in Asia? I talked with my student to set up the object. Student chose their favorite Asian country to start research, local food, clothes, greeting words, to make invitation card. Some of the students had done the handwriting to make the card. Other students used the computer by getting support by family member with a document. Therefore, 11 and 12 years old students improved the typing skill too to engage the ambassador project. All reflections was positive from students and family. It was fun to use a computer by saying Sayaka and her father also enjoyed to support her to support, uh, provide a technical support to use computer. Next project was a ninja project. Why ninja? Ninja has a mission to support someone by secretly. So we set up the goal, how to help family, learn how to use kitchen tools, Think original breakfast recipe. Think nutritious food for sick family member. So all students made the original breakfast and provide on the uh, kitchen on Sunday morning secretly. 
family member was surprised to see that and enjoy eating that breakfast together. And they made uh, a nutritious food recipe and upload the uh, padlet to presentation. So one student gave me a negative comment. For example, uh, due, due to the pressure, posting on the oral presentation flipped was um, a huge burden. But except her, all students enjoy to making the oral presentation video to upload the free grid. So next project was Earth, Moon, Mars project. There are three objectives. Have interest about space planets, improve presentation skills, know the weight difference of each project. So they had done a free grid presentation to upload the video. So September and October, student engaged a musical instrument project, know the feature of the instruments and the plays music together on online. November and December, they decide about the first and the kids to check the each tool and medication to know about the tools. So why is that online PBL was beneficial to students? Because it gives learners tasks to think and act to complete the tasks. When they did a presentation in English and got satisfaction. As a result, all of them are motivated to keep on learning foreign language. So I ask students as an interview based. So 80% of students totally enjoy the project. And also they compare the, uh, each project. So the most popular project was aging project. And the second, Ninja Project, and the third, Asmoon, and also Musical Instrument Project. So nine out of 10 students said they improve the presentation skills. And this writing, listening, reading uh, competence were improved, the students said. And then 12 years old student mentioned that the improves the program skills. So why the online PBA was beneficial to family? Because members had a good time in engaging in the project. They did have a, the chance to go to school and then they needed to do something at home, stay home period. So project engagement Collaboration, observing classes are very beneficial for family members to support online project. So they notice about the old uh, daughter and son's progress. Therefore, those are also good impact for the other family uh, siblings. So there are four reference: Eris, Savignon, Shintani, and I, Takano Yoko's research paper. Thank you for listening. I hope to see you in Cortezo next year in face to face. Thank you. <laughs> my name is Kristina Bath, and this is my colleague Sean Gay. And we are both no, associate lecturers in English Stop. In school. Stop talking, Christina. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the new normal is, uh, yeah. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Arigato gozimashu. Gozaimashu. Gozaimashu. Now I switched into Korean, which is not good for anybody except for maybe Stuart. But he's not listening. Okay. Um, Jason, Wolf, and Jonathan, Adriano, is either one of you here? I still don't see you. That is okay. Um, we have one other asynchronous Pecha Kucha, and I think the presenter just came into the room, Daniela Trinks. Are you there, Daniela? She says, yes, I am. Do you, want me, do you want me to play your video for everybody since we're here and since we have a few minutes? Daniela says, sure. She's one of these lurking 
quiet people. Yes, Yoko, thank you again for that presentation. If I didn't say thank you before, very interesting stuff. And I really like the fact that uh, Japan and Jolt and Korea and Kotesla, we're, we seem to be getting, getting closer together and, uh, and doing more things together, which is very, very nice. Give me one second. I cannot multitask very well at all. But here we go. Teaching the board game Go to English learners. Fascinating stuff. And I'm sure Daniela will be happy to tell you all about that after you see her presentation. So let me share my screen here. There we go. And make it big. There we go. And off we go. Daniela Trinks, teaching the board game Go to English learners. Hello, everyone. How about teaching the board game Go to English learners? Well, you might be wondering what a board game has to do with learning a foreign language. Let me tell you a short story. Once upon a time, a woodcutter saw two monks in the mountains playing Go. Fascinated, he watched them play and put his axe aside. When the game was over, the monks disappeared into the clouds. The handle of the axe was rotten and the blade rusted. This shiny story shows us how time can fly by when playing the game of Go. My name is Daniela Twinks. I'm from the Department of Go Studies at Myeongji University. Before coming to South Korea, I was teaching Go to children and adults. And I can tell you in my classes, the time just flew by. The secret is the game itself. It never gets boring. Nowadays, Go is played all over the world in more than 70 countries. As you can see here in the list, the name of the game differs a little bit depending on the country, but the rule set is basically the same. So what is Go? First of all, it's a board game as it is played on a board. Some people see it as an art and some people emphasize the competitive aspect of the game. And for many amateur players, it's a leisure activity for their whole life. Go is taught in after school programs and private Go schools as is seen as an educational tool. It is also a subject at university and for professional Go players and Go teachers, it is an occupation. One of the legends says that the Chinese Emperor Yao, who lived around 4,000 years ago, invented the game of Go to teach it to his rebellious son, Danchu. Again, we can see the emphasis of the educational value of the game. Now, I've prepared a short quiz for you. Feel free to read the statements and just give it a guess whether they are true or false. No worries, there will be no exam score for that. In 1996, a Japanese and an American were the first astronauts who played Go in space. That is a true statement. As you can see here in the picture, during their space mission, Daniel T. Berry and Koichi Wakata played a game of Go in space. The current presidents of China and South Korea both like the game of Go. That is also a true statement. During his visit to China in 2017, the Korean president Moon Jae-in received a Go set as a present from Chinese President Xi Jinping. Both are known as Go fans. There's no computer Go program that can defeat a human Go professional. That statement was true until recently when the artificial intelligence AlphaGo has been developed and proved to defeat top professionals from South Korea, China, and Japan. So what do you need to play Go? Basically, there are three things. A board, and I suggest you start with a smaller 9x9 board. The game don't last so long and the rules are the same as on the 19x19 board. 
You also need black and white stones and usually two players. Here are the basic rules. The game of course starts with an empty board. One player takes the black stones, the other takes the white stones. The player with the black stones begins by placing a stone on an empty intersection. After that, white also plays a move, then black one. The objective of the game is to surround a bigger area of the board than your opponent. In this game, you can see that black surrounds an area on the right, while white takes the left side. Once a stone is placed, it cannot be moved. However, you can capture opponent's stones. This white stone in the center has four ways to escape. If black blocks all of them, the white stone is captured. A captured stone is kept until the end of the game and it is worth one point. The game continues until both players decide to finish the game. If you don't want to play another move, you can pass. If both players have passed, the game is finished and the final score can be counted. I will show you on the next slide how to do that. Basically, you count all empty spots that have been surrounded by one player. In this game, black gets three points. However, white gets another six points to compensate black's advantage as a starting player. So this game was won by white by one point. Brings me already to the end of my presentation. I gave you a very brief introduction into the Asian board game Go. That is very easy to learn, but full of stories and cultural insight. And last but not least, it's a lot of fun. Here's a list of the sources I have used for the pictures during the presentation. And I also gave you some resources that you can refer to when you prepare a lesson on Go. There are some national and international Go organizations with lots of material. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact me via email or during the conference. Thank you very much for your interest in my presentation and watching it until the end. Thank you. Sorry, you just heard Garrett. He's very interesting, but we don't have time to listen to him today. Does anyone have any questions for Daniela? Just unmute yourself and off you go. Um, I've used board games in class before and things like that. Um, so um, it goes quite um, cerebral and uh, quite difficult for a lot of learners. Um, did you kind of um, do any sort of like pre-game tasks and post-game tasks to help kind of make the kind of the playing of the game uh, a bit more effective or kind of a bit more enjoyable for some of the people who are really bad Go players like me, for example. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for your question. Um, if you teach the game of Go to very young learners, uh, I can recommend to start with what is called Atari Go. Um, that means you focus on the capturing aspect. So you only teach how to capture stones and you don't talk about how to surround area. So, and then the goal of the game, of the game of Atari Go, like a pre-game of Go, is to capture maybe one stone. So who captures first wins. And if you want to make it a bit more difficult later, you can say who captures three stones first. So it might be one stone first, one player, then another player maybe captures two stones and who in total captures three stones at first would win the game. That is a kind of uh, pre-game, you could say, where you, don't, where you make it less complex.
Oh, great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Are there any other questions? I see a lot of frozen faces. <laughs> Kinsella, yes. Kinsella, we can't hear you. Sorry, can you hear me now? Sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Okay. So, um, wh where did you yourself learn to play go? Uh, I'm from Germany, so I learned that game um, as a child in in Germany in Berlin. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so good. Interesting. Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, oh, Germany, fantastic. Wie geht es Ihnen? Danke schön. Wie geht es gut? <laughs> sehr gut, sehr gut. All right, everyone. Fabulous. What a great morning it's been. A lot more relaxed than last night, which was very, very frantic. Um, thank you all for coming. Thank you for putting your Pecha Kuchas together. A very interesting variety. We've learned a, a lot of different things. Feel free to keep in touch with each other. Go hang out in the Discord uh, with Mark the Lurker Jones. And uh, Jim, if you're interested in leadership in Kinsella, or me, if you're interested in movies, or if you want to play Go with Professor Trinks, I'm sure she would be happy to teach you. Um, I'm going to close the session now so you can have a chance to grab a coffee or head straight over to Discord or do whatever it is you're going to do. I hope to see you all again very soon. Well, not very soon because I need more coffee, but in, in the coming sessions and days at the conference, be well, be safe, social distancing, be careful, and I will see you all very, very soon. Thank you. Goodbye.